Hey everyone, Sonia here. Um, I have some bad news about my mom. I'm feeling extremely sad right now. And I'm going to give you an update on what's going on with her, but it's not good. I'm actually sitting right outside of Fabricville right now. I was going to pop in here to get some thread, and then I was like, oh, I'm hungry. Ended up going to the store over there, which turned out to be like a Russian grocery store, so I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Nothing like a little shopping to make you feel better, you know what I mean? I'll show you what I got, actually, it's, it's good stuff. But let me tell you about my mom. So you know that she had this bleeding episode and they took her to the hospital and the bleeding stopped, but she's been like deteriorating ever since then. So she was a little unsteady because I guess she'd lost blood and whatever, but they were checking her vitals and her uh, bloods and they said that she was recovering and she looked like she was okay. Sorry about all the noise. I'm up here like where am I? I don't know, near the airport, I guess. Up, way up on Dakari. Um, she was, you know, she was sort of recovering from that, but something happened last week. She fell. And it's kind of a crazy story, and I do want to tell you what happened, because it's quite outrageous. So apparently, while she was in the common room, she fell. She fell really badly and she hit herself uh, on the nose. Her nose was all swollen and she also hit herself here. And they called me and they told me we found her on the floor, she had fallen. And I was like, how did you find her? This is a common room where most of the people are most of the time. How is it possible that there was no one supervising? And they told me that they only had four people on staff and two of them had gone to lunch. I couldn't understand. How do you leave an entire room full of fragile elderly seniors with dementia? How do you leave them alone and, and have two out of four people go off on lunch together? I couldn't understand. I came in to see my mom and she had some marks here on her nose and her nose was swollen and I could see that she had also hit herself here. And I said, I'd like you to have the doctor look at her. I, I'd actually like for them to take her to the hospital and give her an x-ray. Cause I said, I think she's probably broken her nose. Um, who knows what else, maybe a concussion with this big bump here. They didn't even really notice this. And, and I left and I, I thought she was okay. And I spoke to one of the orderlies a couple days later and they're like, yeah, your mom's all right. She's doing okay. And they hadn't taken her to see the doctor. And I said, why? And they said, well, you know, she seems okay. She's eating and she's walking around. And we asked her after she, when we found her, are you in pain? And she said, no. Wow, she's 88 years old and she has dementia. How reliable of an answer do you think she's gonna give? But anyway, they didn't take her. So I came back today and I was really shocked. Uh, well, the bruising is a lot worse. The nose is very swollen and I, honestly, I think that she broke her nose. Her nose has a bump on it, but now it's like also flat from here down. Very swollen, very blue. The, the, the blow from the nose, like the impact has caused bruising around her eyes, which is not surprising. But this also right here, it's very, um, purple now so she has all this black around her eyes I mean she just looks like she's been hit by a truck and that's upsetting for me I mean I can deal with a lot of bodily fluids I can deal with a lot of difficult personalities I can deal with a lot of needs but the one thing that I have very low tolerance for is seeing people injured like actual you know physical injuries if someone is sick I can cope with it but to see somebody get injured, like, I find it really hard. I think that this is where the limit is of what I can handle as a caregiver. I can handle a lot, but injuries is probably the hardest for me. And it's been the same with Aaron, like when he injured his foot and it was very swollen and infected, I was really struggling. Like, it, that's just so hard for me to see. So, it put me in like a very like sad, fragile, emotional state. And I was talking to the nurse and I was upset too, because I said, how is it possible that you have only four people here? I mean, no, I know how it's possible because the government doesn't give them the funding. Here's a crazy thing. Right now the government is paying something like another 10,000 
students to become orderlies and paying their living expenses of $900 a month. But meanwhile, the way that they are paying for that is by cutting funding to the existing retirement homes so that they have to lay off their existing staff. Makes no sense at all. You're hiring, you're, you're training more people by laying off the ones you have. Oh my God, these politicians. And, and the, the other surprise for those students will be that once they're done with their training, there's not going to be a job for them because the government just tries to make themselves look good. Oh, look, we're training all these people. Yeah, but reality is you don't give the money to the healthcare system to actually hire them and to, you know. So they're understaffed because of this nonsense. And um, I, I really tried to understand, like, why did two people go on lunch together? But apparently it's because there's, there's only two times for lunch and they, 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 there's only two times so they, they split it up two and two that's it they don't like for some reason they can't you know stagger the lunch hours or have it like you know 11 to 12 they can't do it from 12 to 1 because that's when they're feeding the people so some people go 11 to 12 and some people go 1 to 2 so they, they leave them alone uh, if they're doing rounds they, those people are just by themselves so this is how my mother was left unsupervised and she smashed her face completely and probably has a broken nose and it looks terrible and it's very shocking. But moreover, ever since that happened, she has been declining very steeply. She's no longer able to walk by herself. She can't walk like, you know, 15 feet without falling over. Is it because of the accident or did she have the accident because she's already not able to walk properly, you know? Was it related to the bleeding? We don't know, but whatever it is, my mom's not doing well. And I, I was really upset and I was like, why didn't you take her to the doctor? And she's, they're like, well, the doctor only comes once a week. If you want, we can have her seen next Wednesday, today's Friday. So it's like, you know, if you break your nose on a Wednesday and then you go to the doctor a week later, like it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I started to ask myself, is it just me? Like, am I just having trouble accepting that? Like, she's at the end, this is basically hospice and they're, they don't deal with stuff like broken noses. They just let it happen. And they're just like, well, if you're not in pain, okay, here's a Tylenol if you are. It's hard because the, they don't do anything. It's really like sinking in, like it's really at the end for her. And I want to tell you one other thing, which is, and you might think I'm nuts for saying this, maybe not, it doesn't really matter. I have visitations sometimes, you know, from people like right before or after they pass, you know, which I don't want to explain the whole thing, but it has happened. So I've had it with my father and I've had it with Aaron's father also, like right after he passed. So right before my mother had that incident where she had this hemorrhage, which was about two weeks ago. I had like a visitation with her. So this is in a dream. I'm not hallucinating. She's not showing up as a spirit. But I have these dreams which are like, they're lucid dreams, but, and look, disclaimer, I'm not the kind of person who pays a lot of attention to my dreams in general. I don't go, oh, I dreamt about a parrot. It means this or that. I don't really pay much attention to my dreams, but now and then I have these very particular dreams. They're like visions, you know, where usually where it's with somebody's visiting me who has crossed over or is about to, or is crossing over at that time, or has come had a close call. So those are very particular, and I call it a visitation, okay? So, like a day or two before my mother had the hemorrhage, I had this visitation. She came to me in my dream. I, I'm fully aware in the dream when this happens. I'm aware that I'm like asleep, but I'm like lucid dreaming. And I'm aware of this person and I'm aware that this is not just a dream, but this is actually like some kind of communication on the spirit level with this person in my dream, if you understand what I mean. And what happened was that my mother came to visit me in my apartment and I was showing her what I was doing with like selling the clothes because my mom used to be a reseller in the 60s and she's always loved clothes and I was showing her things and she was the way she was before she got dementia and she's like oh this is lovely and what a lovely coat it's so beautiful and she was very happy and she was very proud of me and we had a good time and then in the morning though when I woke up I I was very aware of this dream and I was very aware that this wasn't a normal dream and that it was like a visitation and I thought why is she visiting me 
she's healthy, she's okay, right? This is before she had the bleed. I had this weird feeling. And then like a day or two later is when that happened and I thought that's weird because I had this experience. And backstory, um, more than a couple of years ago, when she first got dementia or like very early on, I had one of those too, where she came to me in my dream and she said to me this is the day that I die but she wasn't meaning now she was showing me the day that she dies and it was in the summer and she looked very like pale and I thought maybe it's her kidneys or something but it was the summer so and I realize that some of you are gonna think I'm nuts and you know what it could be that I was wrong like not wrong but that it means nothing and it's just a dream but this is this is where I'm coming from right now she said to me, this is the day that I die. And she showed me that it was in the summer. So every winter I was like, oh, it's winter. She's going to be fine. I wasn't worried even with COVID and everything. Cause it's like, she had told me I'm going to die in the summer. But then when the summer comes along, I'm always a bit nervous. So when this bleeding happened, I thought about that and I was like, oh my God, it's the summer and the bleed is like related to her urinary system. Maybe this is what's going to kill her but I, I had this feeling like no not this summer and look now we're September it's probably gonna be like next summer or something but I have this feeling you know that she's gonna pass in the summer because of that so it makes me uneasy and I, I felt like she did that to sort of prepare me but now that I see her like declining so rapidly it's very very shocking and you know what when I hug her and I, I kiss her I smell her hair and it's like when you smell your child, you know, you know how like you, you, you hold the person that you love, you hold your child and you smell their hair and it's like, you're just breathing them in. It's like that with my mom, you know, she smells like baby. Like you'd think, oh, it's an old person. She just probably smells like mothballs, but not at all. Like when I hold her and I smell her scent, it's like, she smells like cookies and you know, like a like a kid you know and it really like affects me and I never did that until like a few weeks ago I I was giving her a kiss on the head and I caught her scent and it was just like oh my god because your your sense of smell is very closely associated with your memory and I, I guess I hadn't been that close to my mom to actually get a sniff of her hair in in so many years but then it like brought me back to when I was little and when I, I knew her scent, oh my God, it was just so like, holy shit. And I realized that she still had that same, that same baby scent, you know, and that there's this blood bond. There's just like biological chemical bond with you and your blood relatives. And I have that with my mother, like this chemistry. And I had that with my aunt. When I went to Germany, I felt like it could be my own sister or my mother. I miss my aunt every day. I miss her so much. And there's not, a, I mean, tangent here, but there's not a lot of good communication because I have tried on the phone, but for some reason, it's like we can never connect at the same time. I don't know why it's so complicated. I write her letters. I didn't hear back from her last one, but I miss my aunt so much. So there's this like blood thing. And I don't know when my father passed away, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. With my mother, it's it's like if it's like it's, it's it's almost like losing your child or your sister. Like, it's just so much closer. Or maybe because my father was almost 50 when I was born, and I was geared up for so long that he was gonna, you know, die probably. With my mother, I don't know. Anyway, I think it was just seeing her face beat up like that was just so shocking that I'm I'm just so sad. I feel like my heart is broken. I feel like I want to protect her. I feel like she's just a little girl on the inside. She still, she smells even like a little girl. I just want to protect her. And I was so angry that this happened. I was so angry that she's left alone, you know? This is like the hardest, most emotional point I've ever been at with this whole thing with my mom in all these years. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to pray about it. I'm asking God to help me, like, cope with whatever's going on with her. But I just have this instinct to protect her. And I'm 
I just feel so helpless and I just feel like she's being like knocked down blow by blow you know like first it was the thing like a couple of years ago you know what I'm talking about that kind of set her back that 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 like accelerated things and then she was kind of stable and then there was the bleeding thing and then the fall and usually falls with seniors is really a bad sign but anyway sorry you guys but I, I really wanted to like let you know what's going on because You've, you've known my mom all this time and I've been giving you updates so I wanted to give you this update so anyway I felt like absolutely devastated like it's a, like the limit I, I don't know how I'm gonna cope with this I'm gonna go home and cry I don't know what do you do you know I guess you just grieve and just go through it I'm already grieving now and she's not gone yet I just I just could not believe that she would pass this year like it's not possible she's gonna it's gonna be like next year or something. I just, anyway, whatever. I went shopping to make myself feel better. I got all this Russian stuff. Russian pastry, I got this for Gunnar because he's obsessed with Russian. Yes, I'm gonna show you my shopping haul now. Let's end on a happy note. And thanks for your prayers. I got him Russian water. I'm always thinking of him and wanting to make him happy. And look what I found. I went in there just to get myself, I thought, a sandwich. I ended up coming out with all this Russian stuff for my kid. It's um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but look, Russian version, and it's even red. He's going to love it. It was $26, and I bought it because I know he's going to love it. And he, he can read Russian. He's going to be able to read this. It's going to be super fun for him because it's easy enough, but it's all in Cyrillic alphabet. Super cool. That's for Christmas, but I wish I could give it to him. Now I don't like to wait. And then I got this for me. I call this the heroin cake. Oh, it's not heroin. It's just poppy seeds, but it's so good. Oh, yes, that's what I need. I might eat a lot of it. <laughs> and I got lots of this. Look at this chamomile tea up here. It was like three bucks or not even. Downtown, I paid like almost eight dollars for a thing. Well, I think I got it on sale for seven, but still. It's half the price up here, so we gotta stock up on that because we we'll use that a lot. And, oh yes, I got this for my boy too. Russian, no, this one's Polish, I think. Yeah, it's Polish. Polish strawberry jam. And a whole bunch of um, Russian and Polish candies. I got two of these because I like this one. What do they call it? Shlivka. It's some um, plums. Uh oh. It's overheating. My thing is overheating. I'm gonna have to end it. Anyway, I got all these candies and look, I better wrap it up. I'm gonna kill my phone. Thanks for being there, you guys. Sorry about the bad news, but I wanted to keep you updated. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for joining me in the chat. Thanks for your support. Thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time.